Hi guys, good evening. I hope that you all are doing well today. It is a very lovely Sunday evening. So we are going to be going off into the weeds a little bit, as stated in the last video. And I feel like it's it kind of has to be like that a little bit with like a lot of these commentaries because as previously stated, um, you can only talk so much about uh, these games, I feel, to a certain extent. You can only say so much about the game that maybe you haven't said in other videos or, you know, like, you know what I mean? So this is a game called Cyberlink, and I had never played this game before a day in my life. It was in the box of cartridges that I had seized from a sale back when the movie theater was actually closing some 17 blocks from my home. So this is one of those older SNK titles, I think. Um, I kind of had to struggle a little bit to enjoy it because it was really weird. Like, the game comes off as very, very stiff. The controls aren't really super great, I don't think. You know, like, it's not a horrible game, but it just really did not age well. So I think I kind of struggled with it a little bit more than what I should have. And I think with some enhanced controls that it would have been a much better experience. It was kind of weird because for a while I was just kind of going through playing the game. And it definitely kind of gives me a little bit of uh, old school Duke Nukem vibes where you're just kind of scrolling from one end to the other. And then it also has... Um, a little bit of a Contra vibe to it as well, in terms of being like one of those classic side-scrolling uh, shooters, essentially. So, there is a lot that I actually do like about this game. You know, it shows off a lot of SNK's character, I feel. You know, has a lot of that um, cyberpunk flavoring, I think, that they were really reaching for back then and stuff, back when they were doing their art transition. You know, in terms of uh, what they wanted to actually go forward with. They were kind of having a tendency to leave sports games behind. And they were going more towards this kind of hardcore shooter, uh, science fiction, horror, cyberpunk flavoring. And, you know, I think it just in many ways feels a lot like peak 90s. But I actually enjoyed my time with Cyberlip. I wasn't really that good at it. I only did two runs of it. First run was like really, really bad. I was kind of just sitting around going, God, man, I'm just really awful at this crap. And then the second run, which is the run that I wound up filming, it was really giving me a lot of Contra and R-Type vibes with some of the enemy designs as well as um, how the gameplay itself is done. I had to, with my first run, like, so my first run was going to be literally a blind run where I just said, okay, we're going to stick it on free play. Whatever happens, happens. Let's get filming. Uh, for some reason, the first time that I had actually tried to film this game, it was giving me really bad framerate issues. I don't know what was going on. Like, the gameplay would be solid, but the recording itself would just have an insane amount of judder. And then later on, I wound up going and doing a little bit of digging, and I found that it was a problem, essentially, with... It was a combination of retro arc and using the Final Burn Neo Core, which is the core that I use for all of the SNK games, because MAME just really just did not want to work for me. So Final Burn was, I think, probably the better option because it allowed me to play uh, pretty much every SNK game that I wanted to play. It adhered to um, classic SNK arcade titles a fair bit, and it was also good for uh, Neo Geo AES as well. But to be fair, uh, the Neo Geo AES was just basically a stripped-down version of the arcade, often sporting a lot of the same hardware, just in a much smaller package. Same thing with the cartridges and everything else, which is why the goddamn things are so fucking expensive. So it took me a little bit to actually get Cyberlip running really the way that I wanted it to. And then when I finally did get it running, a lot of the controls were like really stiff and not very responsive. And so I had to actually go and ask around. I'm like, hey, is this game supposed to be this stiff? Jesus Christ, it takes forever to do everything. And everybody clarified. They're like, yeah, hon, that's how that is, you know. So after that was squared away, the only thing left to do was play the game and my godson didn't really care for it too much. Like, I was like, hey man, do you want to play this? And, you know, he tried playing it. He didn't really like the stiffness of the controls either. He kind of struggled with it a fair bit, which is fine, you know. And 
it's not going to be for everybody and so we just kind of moved on from it a fair bit and I wound up wrapping up the recording by myself and you know at the time I think he was playing uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles on another emulator that I had running at the time and you know he just didn't really enjoy it as much as I did. So I think that a lot of the sprite animations for this game, especially like the explosions and the flames, are actually really, really uh, smooth, for lack of a better term. And even all these years later, I think that um, when you realize that it's an older game and stuff, all these years later, it's actually aged really well. You know, it's, it's quite beautiful to look at as a lot of SNK's games have a tendency to be. So it was really, really nice to be able to sit down and be like, hey, you know, this game's well over 20 years old and it still looks quite beautiful for what it is. It doesn't really need a lot of uh, modifications to go and help it look prettier. It just didn't really need a lot to really kind of be like, hey, this is pleasing to look at. I find that a lot of the bosses are incredibly generic and remind me a lot of Contra you know which kind of makes sense because it kind of came out when contra fever was definitely still a thing so it's like a lot of jumping up and down and shifting from platform to platform and everything else but i find that a lot of the bosses going back and actually looking at it now a lot of the bosses are like really really basic the only reason that i didn't really excel with it is because of well mainly visual limitation but going back and actually looking at it now, I'm kind of sitting there saying, oh man, you know, this is, um, you know, th this is relatively simple. There's not really a lot to it. So it kind of, I, I think in many ways, the game is kind of lacking. One of the things that I don't really care for about the game is that there is no uh, lock button. Per se. And what I mean by that is with Contra style shooters, there's a lock button where you could either lock your aim and move around or lock your feet in place and then aim your gun. And this game doesn't appear to have one, as far as I could tell. You know, even after going checking controls, things like that, it doesn't have one. So in order for me to do precision shooting, no matter what, I'm always going to be moving. You know, and I didn't really care for that too much about the game. Which is a shame because I, I feel like if I would have had options for that, I would have enjoyed the game more than what I did. I did have a good time with this game. It's not bad by any means, but I just really wish I could have enjoyed it more. I think the art is on point. You know, uh, the sound is actually quite nice as well. It's definitely an upgrade from other SMK titles that were released around the same time. But no, it, in many ways it just kind of feels like, hey, you know, um, why is this more or less, uh, why is this a thing, you know, and I, I would always kind of wonder about it a little bit. And I forget sometimes that like a lot of arcades never really had like a second thumbstick option, well, joystick option, because, you know, you would always use all of your fingers for the buttons on one hand, and then of course you would use the joystick with your other hand and such and that's just how our kids are unless you're playing a light gun game of course but um i feel like these older arcade games they're fun they're super fun but i really think that they would have easily been able to go and get a second life with a little bit of uh, modernization and stuff especially like go and maybe do a couple of re-releases and be like hey we have better controls now and incorporate like a second thumbstick and you know maybe some shoulder buttons to go and fire and jump and stuff i think that it would create a very fluid experience in many ways playing a lot of snk's older titles and stuff a lot of these games feel timeless and yet at the same time they feel completely and utterly outdated i mean in many ways they feel timeless because you're like hey i'm playing this retro game and it, it still feels pretty good to play for the most part but on the other end it feels relatively outdated because you're like okay well innovations and controls have been made you know obviously we're not using this particular control configuration anymore you know and it's it's just really weird i think it's one of the main things with emulation that we're never really going to escape like emulation is nice on one end if you want like a, a pretty close approximation of what the experience was like back then but i think at the same time i would like emulation to expand out with various other things like 
maybe external support for various uh, control types and stuff like it, i think it would really do um a lot of good to breathe life into these older games like we see older games get modern innovations all the time like you can go and clean up the frame rate a little bit if you don't mind the emulation being inaccurate you can clean up the visuals with various filters or you can use various filters to go and make it look uh, like it was back on original hardware <coughs> but um at the same time you know we have other innovations that are nice as well that go hand in hand like uh, things like retro achievements are really really nice because achievements have been commonplace in pc and console gaming you know there's just like a lot of things that emulation does that uh, supplements the game and kind of brings it up to a modern uh, modern standard so to speak you know to kind of help it fit in with modern gaming a little bit but i find that the controls are always almost especially with arcade games frequently outdated I think the the three consoles I think that I struggle with controls the most on are most arcade games. I think that a lot of the time the PlayStation 1 had fucking awful controls as well. And that was mainly because old school shooters back then were still using shoulder buttons to look around. You know, so a lot of the times I would try to go and map that to, like, say, a thumbstick, which, you know, would be great, but it wouldn't really accommodate for things like dead zones and sensitive aiming and everything else. And then the other console that I think just had the worst fucking controls, and I, I will die on this hill, is the Nintendo 64. And that is mainly because the modern standard for controls now is you go and you look around with right stick and then you of course walk with left stick but with the n64 the way that it had done shooters is um we're gonna go ahead and have you walk around with um uh, you know essentially your right hand and then we're gonna have you look around with you know your left and or sometimes they'll have like old school doom controls where you go and like you walk around and look around with like the same thumb and, you know, those fare a little bit better, I think, you know, because uh, you can somewhat cope with that a little bit better. But, you know, a lot of those older shooters that the N64 used, you know, a lot of the configurations had revolved around uh, what we would now call Southpaw, you know, uh, for left-handed folks and stuff. So in many ways, you know, with emulation and stuff, I think like one of the glaring black eyes of it is literally there's not really a lot of room for modernizing the controls. They can clean up the visuals, they can clean up the sound, they can clean up the frame rate, they can give it achievements and like all these other bells and whistles and even some emulators allow you to replace art assets and texture packs, you know, on various games depending on what you're playing, especially when you start looking at GameCube and PS2 and even Wii to a certain extent, but when you look at controls, there's never really any emulation innovation being done for them. You know, the emulation for the controls always remains the same and stuff. And I'll be honest with you, y'all, not every single batch of controls is great. You know, a lot of these old shooters like this would definitely benefit from, like, a second thumbstick, you know? And, like, yes, to a certain extent, if I wanted to, like, if I wanted to jump and shoot and, like, have more dynamics and stuff, yes, I could go and remap it just to the shoulder buttons, but I would literally have to go and remap each and every button for each and every game, and after a while, it would literally slip into tedium. So, in many ways, I think that, you know, emulation, while it's lovely and stuff, there's still room for innovation. And in many ways, that makes me happy, because... You know, it says, hey, there's still work to be done. So in many ways, the controls were definitely something that I had grown frustrated with, with Cyberlip, at least with Contra and stuff. A lot of the game is not super dynamic. You know, enemies kind of take their time getting there and stuff. And it seems like there's a little bit of a better amount of planning to it. But with a lot of SNK's games, especially games like Metal Slug and stuff, there's not really too much planning going on. I mean, you can try to plan around it, but I find it kind of ridiculous sometimes because you want to jump and shoot and aim and, like, you want to have, like, this specific degree of motion because you're kind of used to it, but older games never really had the luxury of having that, per se. So you kind of struggle with it a little bit, and... 
you know, like you try to cope with it, I think, with older games and stuff, because you realize that these games are good, they are fun, but the controls just really did not age well. And then um, we have other times, especially with this, like given the nature of how the switches are on arcades, a lot of the time the controls are not very responsive, especially with jumping and stuff. Uh, movement in this game feels incredibly chunky. Like, super chunky. And I don't really care for it too much. I mean, I understand that it's how platforming was done back then and stuff, but I think I'm more uh, spoiled by the instantaneous response time a lot of the time of modern games. I mean, even older games, like back on SNES and stuff, had pretty instantaneous response time. So at first I thought, uh, when I was playing this game, I thought, oh man, do I need to adjust run ahead? Because, you know, at first I thought it was a delay between the, um, the controller and, uh, the screen itself because it is an LCD screen. And then, you know, I was going since, um, I was playing this on a handheld. I was sitting there and I was like, oh, that doesn't really seem right. I mean, the controller is literally hardwired in there. It shouldn't really have a lot of delay like this it shouldn't be you know super chunky and so i would literally go and i would be like oh okay well maybe this is just the game and so after a while i found out yeah it is the game no amount of run ahead was going to fix it or anything like that and it was just kind of a hell of a thing because while emulation does a very good job of giving you a rock solid experience most of the time some things you just really can't compensate for especially for certain styles of arcade game with Cyberlib being one of them. So I actually like this boss a lot. You know, this boss we've been fighting for like a hot minute here. I, I really love a lot of the science fiction-y stuff that um, SNK was doing back then because SNK, like, we were kind of coming out of that era of science fiction, I feel, where it was... It was like aliens and robots, but it was like relatively clean. It, it felt more like classic science fiction. Whereas in the 90s, if you're doing science fiction in the 90s, it felt a lot more grotesque and bloody and, you know, like it, it had more of a biological basis to it, I think, you know, almost uh, borderlining on body horror at times. And I really actually kind of liked that a lot. And I think we got a lot of that with, um, in many ways it feels like a lot of leftovers from Aliens, for those that have uh, seen the Aliens film. You know, like, um, it was really, really nice, you know, to see it kind of live on in the 90s a little bit. Because most people, when they think science fiction these days, they think classic science fiction with, like, aliens and UFOs and robots and, you know everything else but with 90 science fiction i think that i've learned to appreciate it a little bit more because there was a certain level of grotesqueness there that we haven't really seen in any of the other decades in many ways i believe that this was just a one-off from the uh the 90s like everything in the 90s i know like tried to be a little bit more edgy than all the other decades and always thought that that was actually kind of funny you know like advertisements were edgy films were kind of edgy a little bit but you could still have fun with them and stuff you know i mean we didn't really worry about it too much which was kind of odd because we were kind of like in this golden age where um people would get offended at things that were worth being offended about but nobody really noticed about you know um what was going on a lot with their entertainment they would just kind of filter it out a little bit you know like if people were going and upset at something there was normally a pretty good reason for it especially like if it was something that was like overly violent or like if they felt that it was like a danger to kids and stuff especially um, looking at entertainment and how it changed after mortal Kombat was released you know so I think the 90s were kind of nice in that regard because um, people were offended at things that were worth being offended about, but silly things they didn't really sweat too much, you know, especially with um, how movies and stuff were done. So you could be grotesque in a lot of these pieces of entertainment and still be relatively okay. Like, it was okay to be grotesque in the 90s, it just wasn't really okay to have an excess of gore. You know, we saw this with Doom and Mortal Kombat and all the other games that everybody were uh, everybody was chasing around at the time. 
So I think one of the things I like about a lot of the SNK games is they're grotesque without being gory. You know, like I think with the hardware that SNK was packing, they could have easily made like a super huge gore fest. You know, they could have gone full tilt with it and it would have actually been really, really lovely. But at the same time, like they had this incredibly unique ability to go and be completely grotesque about something without it being gory, without it being over the top, without it just spraying blood all over the place. And I actually really, really liked that. And the funny thing is, is uh, back then these would be considered uh, mature games, right? You know, games for adults. But by today's standards, I don't think that these games would be rated M. I think these would be more rated T experiences as times in the standards have literally changed around these. So I kind of miss that a little bit because with modern uh, modern games and stuff, if something needs to be grotesque, they have to have like a lot of gore with it. You know, we see that a lot with horror games and stuff, and we also see that it has a very large uh, prevalence in science fiction as well. So I like a lot of these older SNK games, and Cyberlip in general is particularly wonderful in this regard because... They can sit down and say, okay, we're going to make this totally disgusting to look at. But it's not really going to have any gore whatsoever. You know, it's, it's going to be a relatively tame experience. There's going to be explosions, but it's not going to be this over-the-top blood spraying all over the place thing. You know, and I think that I have a certain, t uh, a certain amount of reverence for that. Because they're willing to go and say, hey, we can do this without actually being over the top about it and i think that it takes a certain degree of mastery to be able to pull that off so here we are at pretty much the ending sequence of the game it tries to be Mega Man a little bit and it just says okay you know instead of just giving you the final boss we're going to kind of give you a little bit of a mini boss rush mode and we're going to go and we're going to make it to where you know you go and you pick out what door you want to go into, and if the final boss is in it, ditto. If not, you're going to have to fight one of the older bosses from later and uh, earlier segments of the game. And so all the bosses are here, more or less, and it literally just revolves around you going door to door, literally just re-knocking people over again. And, you know, um, I, I feel like in many ways I understand why they did it. It's not, it's not something that's weird to me, right? You know, like I can literally sit here and look at it and be like, oh, okay, that's fair. A lot of games are doing that back then. So there's part of me that actually kind of looks at it and be like, you know, hey, this is, you know, pretty normal for the time. But there's also a large portion of me that by today's standards, I kind of view it as a little bit lazy, you know, because it's like, oh, I've already killed these bosses. You know, why do I have to come back and you know, do it again, and it's just really kind of one of those oddball things, I think. So with Cyberlip, in many ways, um, when I go and I do the boss rush mode, it kind of feels like SNK's last push for uh, trying to get your quarters, right? So you sit here and you're like, oh my god, you know, which door is it? And, you know, they give you the option of going into whatever the hell door it is, but I also believe that there's a certain degree of randomization with it. You know, and it's not entirely good, it's not entirely bad, it's, you know, just there, essentially. You know, it's just SNK saying, hey, we're going to try to get a little bit more money out of you, depending on how well you do during these bosses, and how well you're able to find the final boss, you know, that's going to greatly dictate how much more cash you're going to be losing out of your pocket. And to be fair, I saw this out of a lot of arcade games, even back then. Cyberlip is not new in this regard, you know, and so... I just kind of said, okay, accepted it for what it is. You know, this is what this is. This is how it has to be. Yada, yada, yada. And that was pretty much it for me. So I had fun doing the boss rush mode. Part of me kind of stopped, I think, giving a shit about it past a certain point. I think that if I was playing it in a more organic experience without, um, you know, uh, free play turned on, I think I'd be sweating it. A little bit more being like oh my god you know I've, I've got to exhibit a certain level of mastery for these bosses because if i don't i'm gonna lose money but you know i think when you have free play on it kind of goes and it robs that tendency a fair bit 
you know, like you literally sit down and you're like, oh, this isn't really that much of a threat. So I think in many ways I kind of robbed myself of the premium rush, you know, that I would typically get if I was going and playing this organically in an arcade instead of in the privacy of my own home, you know, on a handheld more or less with an emulator running it in the background. So... But regardless of, you know, how the experience has changed, I still find myself enjoying these old games. You know, like I enjoy the art, I enjoy the gameplay, even if the controls are kind of butt sometimes. I, I still find ways to enjoy it, and I really, really like that, I think. You know, I think uh, one of the bigger risks of going and playing a lot of these older games, especially if you played it when you're younger, right, is um, the realization, the potential realization of was this game actually good or was I just going and looking at it through rose colored glasses because I was young and inexperienced at the time and hadn't really played much in my life. So it really gives me a lot of food for thought I think and it really kind of puts a smile on my face when I'm able to go and play these older games and be like you know what these were actually pretty goddamn good for what they are. You know and I really just enjoy that essentially. It, it puts a really huge smile on my face because it lets me know that the gaming's not dead. That it wasn't just a flash in the pan, per se. That it wasn't just me going and saying, Oh, dear Lord, I was looking at these through ro rose-colored glasses. These games were actually awful. Now, are there games out there that are like that? Absolutely. Like, no joke. There are plenty of games out there that are like that where, you know, you think they're great because you're young and you just don't know any better, but upon, you know, later discovery, you're kind of like, Oh, man, like, these games are awful, you know? So I feel like this boss fight right here is a little bit corny. You know, the Cyberlip boss in general feels very formulaic, which, you know, um, back then a lot of game companies were doing the style of boss where there were rotating shields that you would have to go and blast away to be able to get to the core boss and actually damage him and stuff. So in many ways, Cyberlip doesn't do anything new in this regard. You know, it's it's still a challenging fight and stuff, but again, SNK is like trying to go and get your money, and I don't really have to worry about that with free play, you know, so it's mainly just going down and, you know, enjoying the experience and saying, oh, okay, you know, we're just kind of going for time spent at this point, you know, going and beating the game and stuff. It still feels incredibly satisfying to go and beat it. I think it's actually kind of funny as well because a lot of games from this era had like a lot of jetpacks and stuff. Like jetpacks in general, um, it seems like jetpacks were very common in like shows from the 70s and 80s. But it seems like games in the 90s had to have like a shit ton of jetpacks for some reason. <laughs> and I always kind of laugh and I smile a little bit because I realize how kind of corny it is because... You're kind of just zipping around on screen with this, like, tiny little, you know, pixelated jetpack on your back. And, you know, it, it definitely felt like a very 90s thing, you know. And I just, I, I enjoy it for what it is, I think. It's great stuff. But no, I think that, um, I think the main problem I had with this boss fight with the cyber lip in general was I couldn't really see the projectiles that well. And so, you know, I'm going, I'm getting nickeled and dimed by them you know, left and right, and, you know, I would honestly expect nothing less at that point. So, I actually really liked the ending for it as well, you know? Like, I kind of like how it alludes that the ending is actually bad, you know? And I think I really kind of appreciated that for what it is, because back then arcade games were very stereotypical. You know, they were like, you saved the world, hooray, you're the hero. But with Cyberlip, they were kind of like, fuck that. You know, it's uh, it's not going to be the best ending for you, essentially. It's going to be incredibly sketchy and stuff. So I, I kind of wish that more games did that. You know, the whole, this is not a happy ending, ending. So with that thought in mind, um, this pretty much concludes the commentary for Cyberlip. I wanted to go and tell everybody that has viewed this video, thank you for hanging out. Thank you for showing up and stuff. I appreciate your time and your effort. I hope you enjoyed your stay here. And as always, um, until next time, be good to yourself and each other, and I'll see you soon.